Hello and welcome. This is a companion video for the Star Starry Night Cowl, which is uh, a design that I have released and it is a twisted rib cowl um, that has a number of elements in it that I thought would best be served by individual um, tutorials. So this tutorial will go over um, how to construct the Japanese short rows as modified by me for the twisted rib. And there are separate videos for the Mobius cast on, as well as for the cable, the, the alternate cable cast off um, to give you this, this super clean edge is done with, an, with the uh, alternate cable cast off. And to get the, uh, the seamless cast on in the middle, we do the, Mo we do the Mobius cast on. So there are separate videos for that, but this is essentially how to do uh, the Japanese short rows as modified by me. So, um, the short rows are fairly invisible, but you can see here in some of where, where we start to get into the color changes being, you know, as we move back and forth through the cowl. Once we've knit Mobius for a while, we switch to knitting flat. Um, and that takes you all the way around the cowl until you hit woo, really long because it's a Mobius doo, 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 all the way until you get to this edge here. So this edge is just one long knit edge all along the edge and, and you create that, you know, nautilus shaping or that swirling shape through these uh, Japanese short rows. So you can see here that, you know, here's a couple of the Japanese short rows which are more obvious when you're talking about a, a color change versus where you're knitting essentially within the same color. But um, this video is, is going to show you how those short rows are knit and how I've modified um, that for this twisted rib. So generally, a Japanese short row is done by knitting to a certain point into, in, your, in your pattern and then turning your work, placing a marker, and then knitting back. So, and to back up, if you've never knit a short row before at all, essentially what a short row is, is it's allowing you to knit partway through your, your work and then knit back and then knit forward and knit back to create kind of sections with more or less, more stitches than other sections. And so that's how we accomplish some shaping, particularly you'll notice it with sweaters. You'll notice it with um, things like this cowl where you have longer sections and shorter sections and we do that through short rows. Um, there are multiple ways of doing short rows. Um, there is the um, German short rows, which um, you know where you pull the yarn over and then you you knit in the other direction. There's wrap and turns and there's Japanese. So Japanese tends to work with the stitch markers and you place the marker at the point you're going to turn. Then you turn the work, you knit back. And then when you do your next row and you have to, and you hit that marker again, you pull the stitch up and work it with its, with the next stitch. Now, because we're knitting a, a twisted rib and a one by one rib, you would normally hide that short row um, piece in the next stitch, but here we can't easily hide it. If we're, if we're doing our short row on, row on a purl stitch, we can't easily hide it in this twisted rib. So to, to accommodate that, I've modified the Japanese short row to twist that stitch um, additionally so that it, hide, it, it, it fits in better with these, sorry, these pieces and these purls right along here. So to do that, I'm gonna show you what that looks like. But before we actually start talking about the Japanese short rows, um, I wanna show that this, this little um, snippet is actually already uh, very much, this, this snippet is already um, in, this, in kind of the design of the pattern. It is twisted stitch on both sides, so you can see that I have knit one through the back loop, purled one through the back loop, knit one through the back loop, purled one through the back loop. The edging here is a two stitch I cord edge, which is what you'll be working. And so this is very, and it's, this is actually, this base that I'm working with is the same base um, that I've recommended, the Stratford Silk base um, in the blue brick. So this is essentially how you would work that. So if I want to show you kind of how these short rows are gonna work, the first thing I'm going to do, and this is a, you know, 24 stitch swatch. So I will first go ahead and knit the first two stitches because that's what your pattern, uh, that's what your pattern calls for, for, for this to, to complete that bit of the I cord edging. And then you're going to work the, the allotted number of stitches 
in the twisted rib. Now, if you're you're gonna be working a make one at the beginning of every round, and just to show you what that make one will look like, you will pull your stitch up from front to back. And if your work, if your next stitch right here is a knit stitch as this one is, then you will actually purl that stitch through the back loop to do the make one. And I apologize if this is a little wonky. Oop. You will purl that through the back loop to do your make one. So now I've made my make one and now I will continue knitting through the back loop. And I apologize if this is a little splitty. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna knit through the back loop. I'm gonna purl through the back loop. And I am still not super comfortable knitting on camera. And for that, I apologize. Knit through the back loop, purl through the back loop. And I'll do this one more time, just for example's sake, knit through the back loop, purl through the back loop. Okay, so I'm going to start, I'm going to do my short rows. Every time I do them, is gonna they're gonna be on a purl stitch. So you're gonna have just worked a purl stitch, and now you're gonna actually turn your, to do the short row, you're going to turn your work around, so now you're on the wrong side. So you'll be confronted with a twisted knit stitch as the stitch you last worked, because you just worked a purl stitch. So to do the Japanese short row, you will take a removable marker and you will fix it around the yarn. Now you can do this with like a, a shred of scrap yarn. You can do it with a one of those um, spiral markers, but the removable makes sure everything stays put. And so that's what I'm gonna use. And so you just slide that removable marker up to the, to the yarn and then you work back. So I just worked a twist, a, a purl one through the back loop. So now I'm going to work a knit one through the back loop. And I'm going back towards my edge that I just came from. And I'm going to do a purl one through the back loop. And I'm going to do a knit one through the back loop. And actually, I'm also going to move the camera down a little so that we get a better shot. Okay. And now I am going to knit one through the back loop again and purl one through the back loop. And now we're hitting that stitch I just made, which if I purl, since I purled one through the back loop, you can see is a knit one. So I'm going to knit that new stitch through the back loop. And now I have, my, I have two stitches left. This is my two stitch I cord and I'm going to slip them purl wise. And now I'm gonna flip my work back. So if we stop and take a look before we continue, we can see that I have my two stitch I cord here. I have the make one that I just added. So now I have an extra, an extra purl stitch here that's now part of my make one edge. And now I have my few uh, round, you know, few repeats of knit one through the back one, purl one through, one through the back loop. And I have here at where the short row ends, a giant hole. You can almost stick your finger through it. So that hole needs to be closed. So while I'm, when I, to, 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 to complete this short row, I can't just leave this hole here, which is why I put this marker in. Oop. And I will show you this marker actually can, you know, it, it's holding a piece of yarn. Now, normally you might just knit this yarn together with the yarn next to it and it'll hide it. But because of these intricate twists, we're actually going to twist this before we knit it. And so I'm gonna show you what it looks like to close uh, this short row. And then I'm gonna work one more just so that you know you see it again. And if there's any other issues, just feel free to slow down this video, watch it on rerun, send me an email, whatever you need. Um, that, because this is a little fiddly, but honestly, um, it's the best way that I've been able to see to get like a nice closed up hole um, that doesn't look gapey compared to the rest of the twisted rib. So to do this again, we're gonna knit these two I-cord edges here. And now we have to make our, our one again. So we're gonna go from the front to the back. Whoop. And because we have a knit stitch this time, instead of a purl, we're actually going, and I'm gonna slip it to the other, we're going to actually purl that through the back loop instead of, or sorry, knit that through the back loop. Whoop instead of purl it. So now we've created a, a knit stitch. We have our other purl stitch from the round before, and we're gonna purl that one through the back loop. And I apologize. Again, I am new to knitting this stuff on video. And 
Okay. So now I'm just going to knit and purl till we get to the knit one through the back loop and purl one through the back loop until we get to our short row, short row end, our marker. Okay. And this is the stitch where we have the, the short row marker. So first thing I'm gonna do is purl through this stitch through the back loop again, just like I have been before. And then I'm gonna move my yarn to the back because we're gonna do this knit stitch next. So now we have a hole and we have a, a marker or we have a, a stitch marker and we have this, this knit one through the back loop that we have to hook to this stitch. So to do this, the first thing I'm gonna do is slip that next knit stitch purl wise. So directly just slip it straight over to your left hand needle. Then I'm gonna take this other, mar the marker from behind and I'm gonna hold it in my left hand and I am going to twist it twice. So let's do that again so that we can see it. I am going to twist it down twice so that you get a nice little twist in that stitch. And then I'm going to slip that twist, if I can do it, over my, my uh, left hand needle. So now you have the stitch, the, the, the next knit stitch on your right hand needle that you've slipped and you have your extra stitch from your short row on your left hand needle. And I'll slip my stitch back so now I have my twisted knit stitch and the extra stitch, the extra yarn from my, um, my short row. And I'm going to knit both of those together through the back loop. And that would be helpful if I didn't slip them and if I kept them in frame. Okay, so I am going to knit them together through the back loop. And you can see that this does get a little fiddly. Okay. And now you can actually just remove the stitch marker. You've, it's done its job. It can be used, you can leave it in there if you want, or it can just be used for the next short row. So now here you are, you have a short row and it, it's gonna look a little jaggy when you first get it in there. But when you work a couple rows past it, it's all gonna settle into place. And so let's do another one just to kind of show you that again. So. Now we're gonna go on. We've already done our first knit stitch, so we're gonna purl one through the back loop, knit one through the back loop, purl one through the back loop, knit one through the back loop, and then purl one through the back loop. And now I'll do another short row just as an for illustrative purposes. So as you get farther away from this, this short row we just did, you actually, it becomes really hard to see where that short row was. And if you flip it to the back, it equally hard to see on the back. So I know that was super fiddly, but by twisting that stitch before we attach it and, and, and putting it behind the knit stitch, we're preserving the line of our twisted rib and we're allowing the eye to kind of blend um, those, those short rows in with the main row. So let's do another one for you know practice sake. So I've just knit to this purl stitch. I'm gonna turn my work and now I'm going to take my working yarn and I'm going to attach. This guy does not wanna behave today. I'm going to attach uh, my marker to my working yarn. Okay, and now I'm just gonna slide it all the way back up against my stitch that I just worked and I'm gonna work that as a knit one through the back loop. And I'm gonna work all the way back to that longer edge that I'm now establishing. Knit one through the back loop. And you could see here now I'm purling that that um, the last wrapped stitch because there's two little purl bumps here. You probably had forgotten where they were actually, and that that was where you you know you just purl or are now purling back through them at this point. 
and the last couple stitches. Let's get this going. Whoop. Trying to stay in frame here, guys. I'm sorry. Okay. Pull and do the back loop. Now I do recommend, and even though I'm using these wooden needles, uh, which I love, they're from Likey. Um, I do love them. Even though I've been using them, I do think that a sharper needle will benefit you with this project. So if you have metal needles for, from Chago or Hayahaya, then go ahead and use those because you will get a slightly easier time in, in some of this, working with some of this yarn. Okay, so we're at the last two stitches. We're gonna slip them as per usual, and we're gonna flip back over. And now you'll see, again, we have a nice big old hole here with our short row. And you can see kind of, if you look, if I flatten this out, that you can definitely subbend, right? We have more stitches on this side than we do on this side. And this this bend is how we, you know, these short rows is how, is how we kind of get that curve and that bend and that arc. So. Um, they, they, you know, they are, they're a, a new way of knitting and they're definitely, um, a little tricksy as, as coined by Laura Nelkin, <laughs> um, when it comes to, um, the, the one by one twisted rib, but they really do add such a cool look when you get done with the project that it's totally worth all the fuss. So let's go back and finish off the second short row. So that's knit two. And then I'm going to have to make another purl stitch here. So I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to bring my yarn to the front. I'm going to purl my, my make one through the back loop. Whoa, that or I'll just lose all my stitches. And, you know, that, that instead. Never mind. Let's start from the beginning. Oh my gosh. Okay. See, sometimes even, even I have fun. Okay. So this is actually already, this guy goes over here. There we go. <laughs> Trials and I cord edging. Okay. All right, let's try this again. Take two. So here you do two I cord edges, and then you do your make one from the front to the back, bring your yarn in front, purl one through the back loop, and I split that yarn again, just because, just because. All right. All right, there's, there's my, my purl. And now knit one through the back loop, purl one through the back loop, all the way up to your short row. And I promise you guys, it won't be this hard for you. I'm just really not used to knitting kind of with a camera. Um, and I hopefully will get better at this as I make more of these videos uh, because I really want to show you all of these techniques so that you're able to knit um, the project and have it look exactly the way I have it. Because nothing's more frustrating to me than when you buy a pattern or you go to knit a pattern and the directions are really vague or they tell you to do something, but you know, things may vary. Like if I just said, hey, do shop Japanese short rows, you're not gonna end up with the same result that I did by all the trial and error that I went through when I did my Japanese short rows. So I really do, I mean, I know the video quality is pretty good, but that like, I'm still new at this. So I apologize for that, but I promise you that my goal is for you to have as an amazing a result um, as I did when I made the sample and so that you're just as happy with what your result is uh, as I was when I made it and that's my goal. So let's knit through the back loop and we are almost to our marker. Okay so now we're back at our marker just like last time. And again, we're going to purl this marker stitch through the back loop. Then we're going to take our yarn to the back and we're going to push our marker to the back as well. And again, this marker just stretches. It's got the yarn on there. So we're going to pull that to the back. 
Again, we're gonna slip the next twisted knit stitch to the right hand needle without uh, purl wise. So don't twist it again, just slip it. Next, we're gonna take this marker that we have um, with our flat stitch on it and we are going to twist it twice. So I'm gonna hold this with my needle so you can see. So I'm gonna just twist once, twist twice. Okay, so now that it's twisted twice, I am going to take that, and I know you kind of need three arms for this, and I am going to use my, my finger to stabilize it, and I'm gonna guide it onto the needle. Sorry about that. For some reason, I had a little more give when I was doing this um, on my own, and I think that's because I had less pressure, like I wasn't having to do this on camera. So I wasn't as nervous, so I wasn't knitting as tightly. So just when you're doing this, remember that, you know, you don't have to strangle your yarn the way I'm currently doing. You can be a little looser with it. And holy cow. Okay, let's undo this again and see if I, I can do it again with, all right. Let's see, twist once, twist twice. Okay, I may have over twisted last time. That might've been why it was so hard to get on there. Okay, so now it's on. It's been twisted twice and it's on. So now we're gonna move our knit stitch that we want to be in front of this stitch back to the left needle. And we are going to knit these two stitches together uh, from the, behind it th through the back loop and I'll push my marker to the front to make it easier and I'll flip my my knitting over so that you can see through the back loop both of them on there pull it around pull it through and now you're there you are um, you have your your stitches together you can take your marker out you can leave it in there if you feel like it um, until you're sure you're happy with the results take your marker out and again it looks a little janky right here, but the moment you start knitting again, you kind of lose sight of it um, in the yarn. And so I will continue going. Knit went through the back, or sorry, purl went through the back loop. Knit went through the back loop. Purl went through the back loop. Uh, knit went through the back loop. Purl one. Knit one. one and then we're gonna slip these last two with the yarn in front because that's how that works so when you get to the end now you set this down you can see that you have two short rows in here and they're fairly invisible considering how much fiddling we had to do um, and because this is all twisted work um, you know you you definitely end up with things being easier to spot when they're not done properly. But, um, you know, if you if you need practice a couple times to, to do this, you can always work a swatch just like this and practice twisting your, um, doing your short rows this way um, before you like jump into the full project. And um, the other thing is that the it is gonna be a little more forgiving in the beginning of the project because you're gonna be twisting, um, you're gonna be doing short rows all, all in the same color, the color gradient will be all, if you're using um, a gradient yarn, a long gradient like I did, when you first start to do short rows, um, you're not gonna be switching colors immediately. So again, you're gonna have a little more forgiveness in there until you start changing colors. They will, again, as I pointed out with the cowl itself, it will become a little more obvious when you start to, you know, add short rows that are a new color. Um, but when you're wearing it and when it's all flowing together, it really does flow together in a way that makes it um, pretty easy to see. And so this is uh, your swatch. It now has a few extra sh rows on this side than on this side. Um, and you know you, you can see even with just a few rows that it, this is starting to have like a curve or a slant to it. Um, and so you can see how you end up, and I'll pull the cowl back over, um, how you can end up with um, these, these kind of like, kind of curve and this is that curved por portion of the cowl where you know you're starting that curve if this is our swatch this is where that curve is starting this is where you're starting to see stitches come up this is where the short rows are being included so um 
you know, and again, it's because it's such a, a large number of short rows and it's it's got so many colors in it, um, you'll have that ability to um, really see it change. And, and that's super cool when you're when you're knitting this project. Um, but so this is basically how the short row portion works. And um, by extension, you've kind of seen how the two stitch eye cord is worked on the edges as well as how the twisted rib itself has worked. Um, definitely check out the video for Mobius Cast On. Um, there are lots of great videos for Mobius Cast On, but again, I wanna make sure that I'm giving you as specific instructions as I can. Um, and then also for the cable alternating cast off or bind off um, so that you can get that really nice edge um, to the bottom of your uh, cowl when you're ready to finally cast off. Um, so anyway, I hope this video was super helpful. I, am, I apologize for any technical issues, like staying in frame, um, and, but I definitely uh, plan to do this more often. And so hopefully it will become a less harrying experience for me and a more enjoyable uh, video for you. Um, thanks for watching. And I hope you really, really enjoy knitting your um, Starry Night cowl.